All right, so um, today's talk is going to be about why it's difficult to leave the narcissist. Um, because people's favorite thing, especially somebody who's never been with one, um, people's favorite thing to say is, well, why don't you just leave? And <laughs> they don't understand how complicated the situation actually is. First of all, it's hard to leave because they hide your car keys half the time. So that's reason number one for anyone who wants to be a smart ass and ask. <laughs> I'm a little bit sick, so if I sound kind of funny, just bear with me. Um, so the narcissist, because they they don't they they don't love themselves. They're just about incapable of loving themselves. So they have to get the um, adoration and worship from anything and everybody else. And that being the case, the only way to get that is to dangle something in front of you um, that you, that is like, you know, one of your deepest heart's desires. You know what I mean? Like, they are very good at figuring out what your favorite thing is, uh, what, you, what you need the most, um, affection, acknowledgement, uh, an opportunity in something, um, closeness. Uh, being seen, being heard, or whatever it is that your that your deepest, darkest need is, the narcissist, uh, unfortunately, is very good at picking that out. They can smell it, and <laughs> once they hook that, and they know that that's your thing, and they figure it out, because they'll work, they'll work at it, and they'll work on you um, to get close to you and to learn about you and learn your. Uh, secrets and your fears and your desires and all these kinds of things they'll do all that all that just to you know get as deep under your skin as they can and they find out what you have your heart set on and they'll just do this with it you know and um, they have you thinking that you could achieve that or get that through them um, and once they have you hooked like that, and this is why sometimes this is why their behavior has to go back and forth. It goes, it has to go back and forth between giving you what it is you need, and then other times they totally turn on you. This is one of the reasons, anyway. They will totally turn on you and and torture you, and then later you'll see the need being met again. And it's because they have they if, if they were to give you what you needed consistently and. Um, to where you wouldn't have to ask for it and you were satisfied and you were happy and you had what you needed and everything was good. <clears throat> they wouldn't have any more power because that's not the point. For them, the point isn't to make you happy. It's to keep you around because they're using you because you're easy because you're nice and you're trusting and they're using that. So long story short, they kind of win because they beat you at the game, at least for that time. But they, they, hook you they lure you in it's like a bait you know um and they once they find out what it is that you want so much you know from a partner or whoever um they use that against you and it's almost like you you it's almost a transaction because you get what you need from them that they have figured out they've cracked your code they know your secret right they'll figure it out you you get that from them and then you have to give something up to have that you give up your autonomy you give up your privacy you give up your um, freedom to make decisions for yourself um, or whatever what anything it could be anything and you give up your body anything and that's it's a trade it's it is a trade with them it's it, it's a contract and so that's why you know by the end of it when it's all said and done and <clears throat> it's over with, you know, the relationship or whatever is over with. You sit back and you, and you think to yourself, man, how was I that stupid? How was I that stupid? That person was never going to love me. That person was never going to um, help me achieve whatever it was that they promised they would. Um, that person was never going to um, support me and in, in what I needed or what have you, whatever the big dream was that they figured out about you and, and used. They were never going to be able to do that. And they don't, they'll, that person will have you thinking that you can only accomplish it through them. They're only going to get it through them. I remember thinking to myself, um, uh, many times, I remember thinking to myself, you know, I'm never going to get anything better than him. So I better be damn glad that he's around. 
And I really thought that. Like, if I could go back and... There's a small part of me that, that wants to go back in time and just kind of slap myself a little bit for thinking that because, like, that's atrocious. <laughs> that's that's horrible to make someone think that. And I, I felt, you know, stupid for, for falling for it. But it's like you can't help but fall for it because they're, the narcissist is so damn good at manipulating. They're so good at getting into your mind and just twisting it into a pretzel. You know, they're, they're so good with psychological shit. It's a damn shame they don't put it to use, like, you know, for something that's actually helpful to society <laughs> because like, they are so good at lying and, um, and pretending. And, uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of grandiosity and, um, uh, you know, like just playing the part. The whole thing is like this fantasy that they build. You know, y'all have this shared fantasy together where you're both going to um, achieve what you want and they're going to help you achieve your dreams and shit like that. And <clears throat> I had boyfriends who, um, back when I had first started making jewelry, I had a couple who were like, oh yeah, you know, that jewelry is going to be great, blah, blah, blah. And, and there was one in particular that would, that would buy um, beading supplies for me. We would go to um, Michael's craft store and I would pick stuff out. And I was used to buying my own stuff. But he was like, no, baby, I'll buy it. I'll buy it. I'll fund this. And I'll never forget, like, one particular time that one particular narcissist was like, um, I picked out some stuff. And, and he he said, no, 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 I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. And I said, you don't have to because I, I don't like, because I know, like, there was a part of me that knew that if I let him start doing stuff for me, there was going to be a transaction. There was going to be a trade somehow. And I was right. <laughs> God damn it. I was right. But... He was like, he like did like a one arm hug, <clears throat> sort of the way my father used to do. And he, it was almost like he was mothering me in a way or doing like a parent, you know, it was that kind of a hug. It was that kind of a interaction. I don't know how to put it into words quite, but it was, it was like that. Like he was, you know, going to take me under his wing and make it all okay. There really wasn't anything wrong. Actually, my fucking life was great before I met him. <laughs> uh, it was after I got him involved in my life that everything just kind of went downhill. But um, he had that air about him that he was able to pull out that card and deal it, you know, and, and sucked me in. That was it. But um, he had a real loving way about telling me that he was going to help me and shit like that. And he was like, no, 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 I'm going to fund this. I'm going to fund this. And that arm came around me and I was like, all right. And I, and I buckled, and I fell for it, and I let him do it. So he just bought me a bunch of fucking beads or whatever from fucking Michaels. But um, that the jewelry is doing good now, but that's due to my efforts, <laughs> not his, um, because I keep at it. Uh, he's long gone, but I've, I've, kept, I've kept with it and, and kept doing it, and it's fine now. But, um, you know, he... Use that was one of the things that he used, you know. Well, yeah, man, your jewelry's gonna be great. You're gonna be, you can be all over the place. You can, you can do um, advertisements online, blah blah. He was like trying to come up with all these ideas and shit to like really, you know, pump me up or whatever. And I don't know what he'd say now if he knows if, if he were to ever find out that I specialize in helping women get away from narcissists. Like, I, <laughs> I don't even know. What he, <laughs> well, he probably said, Oh, yeah, man, that's great, that's great, not knowing that he himself is one. Um, or just being in utter denial about it. But um, the reason they're so hard to break away from like that is because um, they have you thinking that they're the only doorway to what you need or what you want or what's what you have your heart set on, that they're the only way you're going to get it. You know, kind of like how Jesus said too. Um, <clears throat> all things are, are possible only through me. And... Uh, <laughs> um, that is, uh, a, a bit controlling and, um, it's not right to do that to somebody and say, well, you know, uh, if that's what you really want, I mean, we can do it. Um, I'll help you with it. But, you know, in the meantime, I'm going to need your sovereignty and, <laughs> you know, and whatever else you got, you know, what do you got? Lay it out for me. Let me see what I'm working with. And they'll just run the fucking show. And uh, you you get so attached to that because they're so good at just, you know, reeling you in like that. They just pull your ass in and, and they get in your mind and they really implant themselves. And um, 
that is why it's 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 so hard to get out. Not only that, but also the narcissist is operating from a, a, a seriously wounded inner child. All of us have a wounded inner child because all of us were done wrong by our caretaker at some point. Either something was said that was hurtful or something was done that was hurtful by somebody in our youth that has stuck with us, whether we realize it or not. Everyone in the world has it. Um, and the narcissist has it on a severe level. And their uh, way of, quote unquote, coping with it is to... Um, is to say to themselves, well, <clears throat> my mother didn't uh, didn't approve of me or didn't give me affection or didn't pay attention to me or whatever, but I'll be fucking damned if I don't get it from everybody the fuck else. And they'll go out and just like wreak havoc in everybody else's lives <laughs> and do what I was just saying with the hook and the fantasy, right? And they'll go out there and, and they will figure you out. They will figure you out and get close to you and um, and, and find out what you, what you, uh, your deepest, darkest desires are and, and just eat it, you know, and, and, um, but because they're operating from a wounded inner child, that's who's really, you know, pulling all the levers and that person also operates at times as uh, a motherly figure, um, because they're trying to do it for themselves. And this is, this is what happens a lot of times with children, too, when they realize that the caretaker uh, is, is not going to be able to take care of them or whatever, you know, just like can't or won't, you know, won't take care of them, won't love them, won't acknowledge them, whatever the issue is. And the child says, well, hell, I'll just have to do it for myself. I'll find a way because it's survival. And the kid has the caretaker for survival, for food and, and uh, all necessities. And if the caretaker is like, nah, fuck this, I'm not fucking with you, the child has to come up, has to get creative. So the wounded inner child is going to say, well, I'll just have to be my own mother or whoever. And as they get older, they, they do that for other people in the hopes that they can do it for themselves, I suppose. And they'll, they'll deal that card here and there, you know, to just, um, I guess make things interesting and but when you are afraid to leave the narcissist there's a part of you um especially if you're a woman and especially if you have children there's a part of you that is going to feel guilty about leaving this is why i had such a hard time leaving what you call it because <laughs> i tried to break up with him like six times like I, I counted the times it was uh, several times that i tried to split with his ass and we would sit in that um uh godforsaken black Toyota Tundra and um, <laughs> where we argued so much uh, besides my own bedroom at, because I let him come live with me. Um, but we were, we were in his car one time and it was like, I think that was the second to the last time I tried to break up with him because the very last time, of course, I obviously succeeded. He's not here now, but that, this was like the second to the last time I think. And it was hardcore because I was like, you know, I couldn't, I, I, I just, this was like the 20th time I was realizing I couldn't deal with him. And I almost got, I almost got out of it. And he was holding my hand and, um, was doing the real innocent thing. He was doing like a, he was doing like a wounded child thing, but also doing a motherly thing at the same time. And I don't know how to describe that. I'll, I'll, I'll try to come up with the right words, but it's like, it's hard to describe that because that's so screwed up. And it takes serious mental issues to be able to do the gymnastics involved to accomplish that and pull that off. It's like that takes a lot. <laughs> uh, it takes a lot of brain power to do that. So, but he managed and um, he talked me out of, you know, breaking up with him or whatever. And, <laughs> and that how I just sometimes like I used to be ashamed looking back at how often he got by with that. Just that one. It's not, not, not to mention other times I tried to break up with, with boyfriends and they would talk me out of it. Narcissistic or not. But anyway, alas. Um, so, but he, he would talk me out of it every time. And I'd be crying and, and just, you know, raging on the inside like a, like a maelstrom. And he would reel me back in. Because he he was still preying on that little part of me that he had convinced that I, I would never um, get love uh, 
from a, from anybody else or that I would never have anybody like him ever again because he was so great. So, <clears throat> um, he used the wounded, his wounded inner child uh, came to the forefront and said, oh, no, no, please, please, please. And, and once you see that, it fucks with your mind because, because you're, you're going to look at that, you know, and especially if you're a woman with a kid, it's even worse because that's real to you. <laughs> and, um, you're going to look at that and say, oh, shit, I can't leave you. I can't do it because you're going to be in such bad shape if I do. All right. Another six weeks it is, you know, <laughs> and you just like sit in this pile of shit with him <laughs> And, um, and he's like, oh, okay, good. You know, we're back. All right. We're live. We're back live. You know, commercial breaks over, you know, and they just like, they feed off that shit. And all the while, and, and right after y'all have a conversation like that, I, I can guarantee fucking tea they're going to go back. One of the next topics coming up is going to be something you want and something they're, they've been planning on giving you, they've been waiting on giving you, oh, they got a gift for you. Um, or something, you know, because the next topic is going to be about you and how great you are or something about you that they want to give you. And um, that's to distract you from how fucking miserable you are. <laughs> and it's to distract you from the sadness and the guilt um, of, of even thinking of abandoning uh, such a child. Um, and that's uh, at least one of the ways that they make it hard for you to get the hell out is because... <laughs> They are using that that wounded inner child to to prey on your um, instincts and uh, and and your guilt, <clears throat> and you just wallow in that shit. And then some of them are so good that they'll have you feeling bad about it later. Like, how the hell did I even think to leave this poor guy? I mean, he, you know, he's so great. He just needs to be understood. He just blah blah blah. And it's amazing how they do that because. Uh, <laughs> You feel dumb after every time it happens. You feel like an idiot. I don't want you to feel like an idiot. What what what, what might help would be, especially if you've just broken up with them, or even if you haven't, if it's been six or eight months, whatever, it doesn't have to be last week. But if you've left them, you finally got the courage to get out, and you left them, and you're feeling, and there's a part of you that's feeling guilty or bad about it. Because they had their good points. Um, no probably not they might have like somewhere deep down inside but on the surface now because the surface is a facade it's an act but the reason they they were able to make you feel bad is because they let that wounded inner child come out to play and and rear its head and uh you know because it never got attention from the mother or what have you so it's going to turn to you now and then at the same time uh they're they're going to play the motherly figure to you and and that's when they pull out the oh well I know you've been wanting to do such and such for a long time so I booked some tickets blah blah, blah you know and shit like that that's why he was what you call it was buying me um, um, supplies for my jewelry and uh, you know and we couldn't go out and we couldn't be seen in public a lot because because we had the same interests we had all the same interests um, for the most part, except I only wear women's clothes, but <laughs> for the most part, we pretty much have the same interests and we couldn't go to any of the events together that we wanted to go to because his wife who come to find out, uh, was not, uh, had no knowledge of a divorce and being in place. <laughs> I also had the same interests we did. We were all, we all ran in the same fucking circles. Uh, all around the same people, everything. We shopped at the same places. I did consignment at places that she frequented, frequented every week. So it's like, we were, me and her, you know, I'm surprised that we never met. I'm just really surprised that we never ran into each other. Because we knew all the same fucking people. Well, me and him couldn't go to events and shit. You know, because, uh... She she would have been there. He was like, no, no. And I was like, well, if y'all are in the process of splitting, then what's the problem? No, 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 no. And we never never went anywhere together to, like, places, you know, events and stuff. We could go to restaurants and stuff, you know, but not, like, 
open, uh, uh, not like things that like interested us, you know, not like fun stuff. So, <clears throat> um, <laughs> yeah, and that's just, it's just how they do, but they, they make you feel bad, um, because they let the, 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 because really deep down they're operating from the wounded inner child. Seriously. A lot of people are, but most people that are operating from wounded inner child don't wreak the same kind of havoc that the narcissist does because they've let it, um, what makes the narcissist different, one of the things that makes them different is they create a fantasy world, just total fantasy. And the way they present themselves is false. Because what they present and then what you hear about later about their life or whatever will be two totally different things. Or their stories will never finish out. They'll talk about some, oh yeah, I'm going to do such and such. I'm, or I'm in, the, I'm in the process of blah, blah, blah. And then like you'll never hear like the rest of the story after that. But it's because it didn't happen. I'm just going to tell you the answer now. It, it didn't happen. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people like that. Um, <clears throat> and it, <laughs> they just... And especially when it comes to other people's desires and stuff, they never they can't let that happen either. Because, like I say, if they did, if you if you got everything you needed from that person, like that would they wouldn't be important anymore because there'd be no more exchange. There'd be no more, you know, you wouldn't be locked in a cage anymore, like waiting to be fed. You know, it would just be you'd be at the feast table and it, it, it problem solved for you. And um, that's no good to them because they have to keep you starving so that every little morsel you get, you're grateful for. And uh, and then when they leave and you realize you're not even getting the morsels, you think, oh my God, you know, what am I going to do? And, and that's, oops, sorry. And that's, um, that's how they do that. So, <laughs> it's the damnedest thing, but they, they really, they just know, they know how to dig deep and really bury themselves in your mind and they can do it in ways that most people would have no idea how to do most people might, might be able to manipulate or act you know to some extent you know just out of sheer necessity every now and then when they have to cover their ass for something maybe everybody's had to do it for something at some point just for survival's sake you know whether it was malintent or not but the narcissist can can build a fantasy world around you where you're thinking that, you know, you're on a merry-go-round, uh, but, you know, you, <laughs> he's going to come up and just, like, shove you off the horse, and then you're going to say, oh, that hurt. Oh, well, get back on there. And then you get back on there, and you go around a little bit, and he shoves you back off. You know, it's like that. So it, it, it's back and forth like that. Because if he lets you just go on the merry-go-round and, like, do the rounds and, you know, get it out of your system, it, what good is he, you know, or she, whatever. And... Uh, it's just that's their only way to that's their only way to, to establish it <clears throat> so and because they they don't they never learn how to love themselves because their caretaker wasn't able to love them or what have you um, they they're the only other you know survival uh, tactic for them is to just get it from everybody else but it's fake anyway because they create a fantasy world like I say none of the shit they say is true that's why their stories don't add up, you know, when they tell you stuff. Or one of my favorites, this is the real definition of gaslighting in case no one's aware of this. Because I, I, this word gets thrown around a lot and I, um, it's not, it's not what people say it is because um, I think it's, it's just, you know, it, it's been confused with other things. But the, the real and true definition of, of gaslighting, which I think originally was a play and then it was a movie. The movie was, uh, I think, from the 30s, and it was about a man who had married this woman for her money, and he told her things about her her life and her reality that weren't true, and he had her think that she was losing her mind. Um, so that way, you know, she could be locked up in the loony bin and he could just fuck off with her money. Well, the gaslighting part is telling somebody um, things about their reality that is not true. And like I say... Uh, this is one of the guys in particular that used to tell me what I had said or, or not said or what I had done or not done. And I would have to stop and think and say, damn, did I say that? Well, shit. That's, I, that's not even how I would word that. That's not even how I would say that. 
this, I wouldn't even, yeah, I wouldn't have used that word. And <laughs> the stupid part is one in particular who used to do that to me was uh, a lot less um, educated than me. And he, I used words that he didn't understand all the time. And I don't mean that in a hateful way, but it's like, it's whatever. I'm not going to lie. But I used a lot of words that he didn't understand. So what I'm trying to say is there's no goddamn way that he could quote me. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and they'll go after that too. They'll go after intellectuals. And they'll go after somebody who's like hyper whatever. Or they'll go after somebody that's like, for lack of a better way to put it, you know, top quality, like quality people. Um, <clears throat> everyone is of the same value, but you know what I'm saying? Like they'll go after somebody that everybody else wants. And um, so they, so when they, when they picked me, I've always read books and, I can't say I was ever athletic, but uh, maybe for a short time, but, uh, um, but the, you know, they, they picked me for whatever reason and they would pray on that and use that. But like I say, when he would try to, um, quote me or, or like tell me what I had said. And I, I just remember all those times stopping in my tracks and thinking, you know, that's not even how I would have said that. But because I had already given up autonomy in order to have the transaction with him of getting love that I, I, that he had convinced me I was never going to get anywhere else. Um, I, I, I gave up decision-making and um, having any damn sense. <laughs> I just relinquished all of that. And um, so I, I, I didn't trust myself. I trusted him. <clears throat> uh, and a, a good many, good many women are taught to listen to men and do as they say anyway, especially in the household I, I grew up in, and which is probably um, the root of a lot of my problems. Because <laughs> um, I did as I was told, and uh, that, that, that brought a lot of misery. So also, that's also why I have such a fucking problem with authority figures. But we'll get to that another time. But, um, you know, in his case, when he would have me doubt myself when I knew good and goddamn well what I said because I remember <laughs> I remember what I was wearing I remember where the fuck I was standing you know I, I remember details and shit when somebody says something meaningful if, if it means something to me I will fucking remember it what's weird is I typically remember remember how people are situated physically when it's said I remember where people are standing when things are said it's weird I don't know why that even matters in my brain but it does but like, I remember things being said in the kitchen, being said in the corner of my bedroom in front of my closet, being said in the driveway, you know, shit like that. It's weird. But he, um, he would say, well, don't you remember that time you said you'd let me do it because blah, blah, blah. And because you said, um, blah, 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 blah. And I would just like really have to stop and think like, Jesus Christ, did I really say that? You know, what was I drinking that night? Well, <laughs> you know what? Where is that coming from? It was coming from his fucking imagination, that's where. Because these people tell themselves shit that, uh, to, uh, that they tell it to themselves so much that they, they believe it's true. And and that's why there's no arguing with them. And there's sur there sure as hell isn't any uh, fixing them. I keep trying to tell people this, you know, like, um, women especially are uh, under the impression that they have to fix men. Uh, and And that's not... There is no fixing them. <laughs> um, there, there's not there's not any fixing them, but especially narcissistic ones, um, they're even uh, more extreme, and uh, um, more, you know, believing that they can do no wrong, and th that's a, that's like you know a slightly different animal, and because they're living in their little fantasy world where they call the shots and uh you know you're going to sign your name in blood and everything else once once you let them do that they 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 plant a seed in your head in your psyche that just grows into this you know creeper vine that goes all over your being and they really dig themselves in and this is why it takes so long to get over the son of a bitch because I'll never forget the time I was talking to some friend of mine it wasn't like a friend, friend, like an acquaintance or whatever. And we were chatting on Snapchat. And um, he, I was telling him something about a bad reaction I'd had because I was at the grocery store. I was in Virginia Beach at the time, so it was Food Lion. 
and uh, I was in food line and I saw a guy that looked like Mr. So-and-so and and, <laughs> and, and when I looked at him there was a there was a small part of my brain that said oh, no, that's not him that's that's clearly not him relax but it didn't matter because my reptilian cortex took over and because there were too many similarities the stupid goddamn uh tribal barbed wire shit over here whatever that is the goofy ass navy buzz cut you know <clears throat> Um, and what it, cause all those guys look the same up there. They all look the same. If you go to Virginia fucking beach, you'll see what I mean. They, they're all, they all look the same. So I saw him. I thought, oh no, that's not him. That's not him. That's his face is different. His body's different. That's not him. That's not him. He doesn't have the right tattoo. I was like studying this guy, like trying to compare tattoos and shit. And, and he, we were on the same aisle, look at the same shit. And so for a second, he just kind of looked at me and smiled and I, my blood pressure must have tripled and I got I got out of there and um, there was another time that I went in that store and he was fucking there again and this poor guy has nothing to do <laughs> he, he does not know me but it's like I saw him and there was just too much there were just too many similarities and we were lined up at the register and I was behind him <clears throat> and he must have felt me staring at him because he turned around and looked right at me. And I thought I was going to die. <laughs> um, I thought I was going to die. Because I was trying to, I guess I was trying to like overcome my fear. So I got in line behind him. I was also ready to go. You know, I'm like, my buggy was full. But I guess I was just trying to like fight it, you know, fight the fear or whatever. So I was like, nah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. This is fine. It's not him. It's not him. And I got behind him. So the only distance between us was my, was my fucking buggy. So what's that, you know, five feet tops. <clears throat> and um, he turned around and looked right at me and, and just kind of like half smiled and looked away. So he didn't do anything wrong, but it didn't matter because my fucking brain was like, run, run, run. And ran I did. I sure as fuck did. I hid behind the wine. I took the damn buggy with me, but I got out of it. I got as far away from him as I could, and I had to wait until his ass got his fucking Coors Light or whatever the fuck he, he was getting and got out the store. And then I went up and got my stuff, and I, I scanned the parking lot for him. And I scanned the parking lot for the goddamn black Toyota Tundra. I didn't see it. So I went to my car, loaded my shit up, and I went home. Well, the friend I was talking to on Snapchat, I told him that story, those two stories. <clears throat> and he comes, and this guy doesn't even hardly know me. Like, we weren't, we were just barely acquainted. We were just fucking around. And, um, and I was just like, for some reason, I told him that. So he asked me something, I don't know. But I told him those two stories. Because they were real recent at that time. And he said, well, sounds like PTSD, <laughs> And he thought it was funny. Um, <clears throat> so, <laughs> but when that was said to me, and I stopped and I stood there and was just like reading my phone, and I froze because no one had ever thought to tell me that before. He didn't think much of me either because he didn't give a fuck. He thought that was funny, that I was scared for my life. But, um, um, Dudes don't care that we're afraid of, of the, <laughs> they don't care, <laughs> but that one, you know, especially didn't, but what he said stuck with me forever because no one else as dumb as, as he was, no one else had thought enough of me to tell me that I, I was, I was in pain because I was in denial of that, I guess. And, um, I was in denial of the damage that had been done to me completely. You know, I just wasn't aware of it. I wasn't aware of the shape I was in. Um, and when I saw it, well, it sounds like PTSD, <laughs> you know, laugh out loud, whatever the fuck. Um, I, I looked at that and I looked at that for a long time. I thought, shit, I, am I that? I was like, nah, I can't be that messed up. I can't be that messed up. Cause you're in denial about it because you don't want to believe that, that a son of a bitch who was allowed to get between your legs, tell you what to do, go through all your stuff and your house, go through your phone, go through your email um, filter out all your friends, um, and tell you what to do all the goddamn motherfucking fucking time would 
have the uh, power to do that kind of damage to you and that somebody would actually notice it and say, hey, you might be kind of fucked up. Do you ever think about that? Because, like, <laughs> it never occurs to you because you're so goddamn brainwashed. Okay. <laughs> and uh, that was a real pivotal moment for me. And I, and I just, I remember standing in my room. I was standing by the window in front of my vanity. And it was a spring day and the sun was shining in. And I, and I stood there in front of my bookcase up against the wall. And I looked at that phone and I, and I just froze. Like, PTS, goddamn D, no. No, 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 I can't be that bad off. I can't be that bad off. I didn't want to believe it. I didn't want to believe it. Fuck me, mate. I looked it up. I, <laughs> I went to the government website. And God bless them. I went to the government website. And um, I, I took a test or something. And I mean, I checked every fucking box. I checked every box. And I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was like, no, 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 no. Because I didn't want to believe I was that hurt. <laughs> that I was in, in that kind of shape. I just didn't want to accept it. I was like, no. Nah. Oh, there's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with me. But there was. I was fucked up. And after that, I did go to therapy. And I saw um, Rosemary Thompson at um, Cova, Cova Therapy over there in Virginia Beach, down by um, <clears throat> Lidhaven Mall. That was close to the place where I got my um, LASIK eye surgery done, too, so I knew the area down there already. Um, but, um, you know, that, uh, the, uh, that was brutal. I'll tell you how that lady helped me. She, um, my first appointment in there with her, she introduced me to a, a song or like a recording on YouTube, and it's by a group called Marconi Union. Marconi, M-A-R-C-O-N-I Union. And the song is like six minutes long or something, six and a half minutes long. If you go and look it up, it's, it's, it's good. Um, it's just like a, it's not a song song. It's just a vibe, you know, it's a vibe thing. And um, I don't know what the hertz is that they use or whatever, but she said that it reduces stress by 60%. And she played it for me in the office. And then I, she sent me the link and I, I downloaded it. I mean, I saved it, you know, from YouTube or wherever, however I got it. And um, I, I still have it. And this was like, year. this was several years ago, but I still have it because it, it's good and it works. <clears throat> and... Um, I started using that. I started feeling kind of better. Um, but yeah, uh, um, she was great. But I just didn't want to believe I was in that kind of shape. But I, I had let him have so much power because I let him convince me because he knew he saw my wounded inner child. And uh, he had me convinced that I just, I don't know the times I sat there um, either with him or by myself. You know, if I was like in my room chilling alone. The times that I would just think to myself, you know, I'm so lucky to have him. I, I, I'm i never going to get anybody as good as him ever again. I'm just not going to. I'm not going to find it. Because I thought he was great. Even though he, <laughs> he worked up as many tears for himself as, as I did for me. <laughs> um, but... We we would we argued a lot. I don't know. I, I could, half of our arguments, I swear to God, I couldn't tell you what they were about. <clears throat> um, but anyway, yeah. So they they reel you in with shit, um, and it's funny because the stuff that he told he pretty much had me convinced that I wasn't gonna have without him. I have now. <laughs> so I turns out I didn't need him, but like I didn't know that. You know, two thousand six sixteen me, you know, didn't know that. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's an interesting, uh, experience, but <clears throat> that's why it's hard because they just, they get into your psyche and they get in there so bad. And that's why when you're out in public and you see somebody who you think looks like them, you panic because <laughs> there's they buried their seeds so deep in you. It's just really amazing how they do that. I don't know why they don't work for the government and like put that to use. I just don't know. I mean, not only would they be helpful, you know, in in manipulating like the bad guys or whatever, but also they make a boatload of money. So it's like you don't have to keep asking me for money if you <laughs> 
go and have a good paying job somewhere where you actually put yourself to use, but fuck what I think. So, but anyway, yeah, the fantasy. They, they build the fantasy and they believe it. And then they have the fucking nerve to be shocked when, like, you come to your senses and, you know, you break up with them for the last time and you leave. And then you leave for real. And then, you know, it's been, like, two weeks and they haven't heard from you. And eventually they'll give up. I'd go to the courthouse for that, though, goddamn. Because, like, a friend, uh, somebody who I thought was a friend of mine um, told me one time, as per Matt's request, please do not um, talk about him or whatever the fuck it was. I don't even know anymore because it fucking... It, 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 what she was saying had never taken place, so it's like it didn't matter to me because it wasn't true. But she was like, as per Matt's request, please do not blah, blah, blah. And me and her didn't talk a whole lot at that time. And I, we were still like friends or whatever, but, you know, we just, we had like a quiet period of time. You know what I mean? And like she came, she popped up with that. And I just thought, are you out of your ever loving mind? <laughs> I said, first of all, I'll say what I want to whomever I want. Number one, damn it. And two, if he wants to shut me up, he's got to come over here and shoot me, which I know he's too pussy to do. Three, why are you talking to him and why is he confiding in you? Why are y'all, I mean, because she witnessed a lot of the shit that went down. She witnessed some of it in person, but she knew a lot about it. And for, for me and her to have been friends before he ever showed up and her to turn to me and say, as per Matt's request, I just thought I ought to slap both of y'all. I ought to take both y'all's heads to just go do that. Have each other. Y'all can be friends. Fuck both of you. And I quit talking about I quit talking both of them after that. But she bugged me one last time about him running his mouth. Um, about me running my mouth about him. Stop talking about me to all your goddamn fucking friends. Stop running your goddamn mouth. I'll say what I want. Bro, Google me. Miranda Wyatt Life Coach. All I do is run my mouth. That's all I do is run my mouth. All my shit's public. You can see everything I've written and everything I've said. It's all public. Do you know why? Because I don't have anything to hide. I have nothing to hide. I don't give a goddamn. I'll tell you everything. I basically have. <clears throat> you go look at all my other videos. I've cried and told you all kinds of shit. I don't have anything to hide. Fuck it. But if I want to run my mouth and talk about you, damn it, you better believe I will. <laughs> because I got something to say. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This is what happened. Boom, 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 boom. That's why I get so passionate in my videos. Because this shit happened. I remember how it felt. You know, I mean, <clears throat> and I want people to, to know that they're not alone. That's my other, you know, that's another reason I, I tell so many stories. Because a lot of people feel so alone and stuff. And, and they're not. They're not alone. You're not alone. But um, when she pulled that, I was like, uh, <laughs> okay, fuck you. <laughs> Thought you were my friend, you know. And then even on Instagram, I I, um, I followed all her stuff. <clears throat> she never talked to me even on Instagram until one time <clears throat> she popped up to disagree with me on something. You know, you know those people only comment to to argue. And she said something that like went against whatever I posted or some shit like that. I don't remember what, even what the fuck it was. And I was like, you know what, fuck it. But she, um had bugged me one last time about him being mad that I was quote unquote talking about him. And you're damn right I did. I, I fucking told the world. I told it. I had a YouTube channel that time. <clears throat> I don't, it's not the same one I have now. I don't remember what that one I deleted it ages ago, but that was even before you could hook up, I think your Google email, I mean your Gmail with YouTube or whatever. It was before that. Um, but yeah, I, I talked about him. Hell yeah, I did. But, um, because he, he had damaged me so damn badly and I just, I, I couldn't blow off enough steam. But I, I told my friends what happened and, and everybody knew and everybody saw it play out a lot of the times because we were in public when shit would go down and he'd start acting up. So it's like people knew whether I fucking told him or not. <clears throat> and, um, so she she popped up like one last time and was like, uh, Matt says, I said, you know what? I don't give a goddamn what Matt says. Matt can go fucking kill himself. I don't care. Like I was so mad. I was so mad. I said, he can drive that, that fucking uh, infernal truck off the fucking Chesapeake Bay Bridge. I don't give a goddamn. 
I don't give a fuck what he has to say. And it was too late because by the time she had texted me that or whatever, I said, it's, girl, I said, it's too late now. You can't intervene. Sit down. I was on fucking Farrell Parkway merging onto goddamn uh, Virginia Beach Boulevard to go to the courthouse all, all the way at the end of that road, if you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> and um, I was passing um, Princess Anne High School, I think. Is what I, was, I think that's where I was. But I was like coming right off that split from Farrell Parkway. And um, I said, it's too late now. I'm about this close to the courthouse. I was like, a you know, a, a mile or two from the courthouse. And... Um, <clears throat> if I remember it right, and uh, she and and she panicked and she called me and I said, look, I I I think I'm done with both of you at this point um, because y'all two are still talking a lot for some reason. I don't know why. You saw what he did to me, so why the fuck are you even? Whose side are you on? <laughs> because I take loyalty very seriously, and I take that seriously. So you're not gonna be my friend and then also let my enemy confide in you about me. Are you kidding me? fuck out of here. So I said, it's too late now. I'm going to the courthouse. I'm, I'm getting whatever I can get. I got no contact order, but, um, <clears throat> uh, and I gave that guy all the information I had and, um, and I, I, I did get that. So, um, but that, I mean, after that it quit, you know, after that it, it I finally didn't hear from them, from either one of them. And, and that was the end of it. But they, they get into your brain and they have you thinking, that um, you can't do it without them. And that's why women stick around because they're afraid they're not going to make enough money. Uh, they're afraid um, that they're not going to live as good of a lifestyle if, if, if he has a good income. They're afraid nobody else is going to love them. And women are not taught to um, uh, trust their instinct or trust their power. They're taught to, you know, find the right man. And uh, that's killing us. <laughs> and... Um, that's no way to live and it's shitty and it's wrong and it's hurting us and because of that we let we let men push us around and um we let them uh, kind of do what they want and we we complain and we and we bark about it but we, we still let it slide and it's because we've been taught that if, if i don't have him i'm not going to have as good of a life and that there's and that it's got to be some kind of a trade and that's just you know par for the course and, and indeed it is but you could go without that as well. And and women are afraid to go without that because they've been taught that they're they're not enough on their own. You gotta wear makeup, you gotta get breast implants, you gotta have a big fat ass, you gotta um, you know, uh have the right friends, you gotta have the boyfriend's gotta be such and such, you know, you you gotta have a, a such and such kind of car. You better have some kind of degree or certificate under your belt so you can, you know, make make money have a good job but when you're at work you got to be the best thing you got to be perfect you got to be just what the manager wants you got to be what everybody else wants you got to be what strangers want you know and and you, you have to wear all these fucking hats and you have to be all these fucking things and and all the while that you're doing this fucking song and dance about being a different damn identity every five seconds you're still even after all that you're still taught that you can't and that you're not able and that you're not really going to be up to the challenges of life on your own and that you need a man with you, the right man, who is going to help you along the way and uh, help you do things that you can't do and shit like that. <clears throat> and because of that, because we're taught not to have faith in ourselves and in, we're, we're taught to make it look like we've invested in ourselves but not sincerely invested. There's a difference. There's a difference between, you know, um, somebody being taught to just, you know, make sure they look perfect every day versus somebody who is taught to, um, uh, get, you know, an education or, uh, invest in their mental health or invest in their physical health or something like that. When you invest in yourself, you don't need any goddamn body, you know, for the most, not for survival anyway. If you can do shit on your own, make your own money, have your own income, have a side income, have three incomes and, and pay for your own place, well then hell, um, <laughs> I could go on about that all day. I'm going to try not to, but my point is because we're taught that we're not enough on our own, which is awfully strange <clears throat> because we're the portal between this world and the next. <laughs> um, and I don't think anybody else can top that. Um, we're still taught that we're not good enough. We're not blonde enough. Our tits aren't big enough. God damn it. 
you know, and it's just shit like that that has continued and continued over the eons. And so you let men uh, come into your life, narcissistic or not, you know, they have a lot of overlapping. Mm. But um, they just kind of like bust in and, and they'll buy you shit to make you think that that's going to, that your life is going to upgrade so much with them involved. And then you realize the sacrifices you're making and the trade that you make. Your body's not yours anymore. Your fuck your opinions. And your spiritual beliefs, chuck them. Because they're going to laugh at all that shit. I've had my spiritual beliefs laughed at countless times by men who were allowed to get between my legs, tell me what to do, tell me what I was going to eat, go through my phone, all of it. And I, and I, I'm, I'm just silly, you know. And why do I believe in this? Why do I believe in that? I'm just a fucking idiot. But but they're allowed to do what they want. And I can't say shit. And it was like that for a long time. And then finally I just quit fooling with it. I don't fuck with anybody now. I've never been happier. I've never been happier. <clears throat> but, um, and that seems to be uh, uh, the next uh, pandemic. <laughs> um, so... That, you know, but, um, that thing where they build that fantasy for you, you know, oh, wait, but look at this, look at this, you know, and you have to be careful <clears throat> because they know how to pick out the, once they get to know you, they know how to pick out what you want from life that, that you haven't accomplished yet or worse that you're convinced you can't do on your own. It's because you're convinced you can't do it on your own because you've been taught that you're not enough on your own. That should probably be a whole separate video, to be honest with you, because that's a really good topic. But that's why. So they they anchor themselves in like that, you know, into your soil, and you just have to tear them out by the root. <clears throat> and like I say, people are always like, well, how do I get away? How do I get away? Well, I mean, do you mean like, I made a video about, um, how to plan your escape. And that's like practical moves you can make, like stowing away money, networking with people who can back you up, who can speak for you in court, somebody who can give you a ride in an emergency if you need to get out of there. Um, somebody whose house you could stay at, you know, in the middle of the night if you have to show up. <clears throat> uh, a getaway bag, copies of documents, a spare key, you know, copies of keys, whatever. Uh, things like that. And then besides that, if you're talking about Emotionally, how do you get away? You have to be ready to mourn the loss because the the like I say, the narcissist um, inner child who is pulling all the puppet strings um, is running the show, and your guilt of abandoning that child is what is what stops you. And you have to just bite the bullet and and dig your heels in and just say, you know what. I gotta leave you. I gotta leave you behind. Because I didn't want to do it. I was like, no, I can't leave this poor guy. Blah, blah, blah. And that's stupid because it was it was his it was gonna be his life or mine. <laughs> you know, you have to choose whose life you're gonna um protect. Who's whose uh sanity and whose happiness are you gonna protect? <clears throat> so and you kinda have to choose yourself in the end. Um but so abandoning the, their inner child is, is what makes you feel so bad. But you have to just suck it up and do it because it's, it's you or them. They make it to where they push you into a corner and they make it to where you have to choose you, your sanity or their you know entertainment. It's one or the other. And that's it. And, and that comes with that decision comes with being at rock bottom and marinating at rock bottom for however long you need to before you finally say, you know what, I'm calling the divorce lawyer or I'm, I'm packing my shit or whatever, whatever it is that you need to do to start making the move. <clears throat> but yeah, you just got to sit at rock bottom. You got to sit in your own shit for a little bit until you get tired of it and mourn the loss of the, their wounded inner child that you are turning your back on. But you've got to because they can't be fixed. 
<clears throat> with years of therapy, they could probably learn how to catch themselves doing bad things to people. But I, but I don't know, you know, what their chances are of, of really turning it around. Possibly, I like to believe, you know, that every human being has a chance to to get better. You know, I like to believe that because I'll try to be open minded about it. But you know, there's no use in waiting around for that because first they have to the narcissist has to realize that they're in the wrong, and first and foremost, you know, they're not. So <clears throat> them going to therapy and, and turning that around is is like next to zero. <laughs> so it, it's you or them. You get you only get to save one. It's you or them. And that's why it's hard. It's because they, they do they dangle their wounded child in front of you. Like, look at this though, isn't this sad? Blah blah. And you hell, you've got one too, you know. <laughs> everybody else has one too. So, you know, it's not yeah, you know, everybody's hurt in their childhood from something. So like you see what I mean? <clears throat> but that's why. So um I hope that, that you know clears that up for you. Um it's the guilt. It's the guilt that's holding you back. And you have to mourn that guilt. You have to mourn that relationship, that dynamic, that bond, trauma bond. Uh, uh, you know it's even though it, it is a bond, it is a trauma bond, but you have to mourn the breaking and the dying and the withering of that bond. Uh, like you would any other because uh, you you are abandoning uh, a wounded inner child and it and it does feel bad but you it, it, you gotta do it you gotta you've got your own wounded inner child that you've got to figure out and protect and and integrate so it's so um, you just gotta do it because you, you don't you don't have to and you shouldn't have to waste another damn minute of your life on that shit. Period. That's it. <clears throat> so, um, I hope that that was helpful. I hope that that cleared some things up for y'all. Um, I see a bunch of people joined. I, uh, the thing is blocking my phone at the bottom there, so I can't see everyone's names. Um, but anyway, so that's, uh, that's my spiel for today. <laughs> well, I might, I might do another video. I don't know. There's another Somebody had left a comment about something and it was really good and I wanted to do a video based on that. So, um, I, I think I got one more, uh, one more in me for today. Um, if you want, you can join my Facebook group, um, and all the group members in there, they get 50% off my jewelry and my Etsy shop. And also they get to, um, decide topics for my videos and, um, and help me come up with like, you know, new programs and stuff to offer y'all. So, uh, you know, if you want to get my group, <clears throat> It's um, How to Stop Attracting Narcissists for Women Only uh, on Facebook. And the link is, um, you can go to my website, and the link is on there as well, MirandaWhiteLifeCoach.com. So, um, but anyway, yeah, join my group. I got a good group of ladies in there, um, really good stuff. And, uh, you know, we share memes and stuff and just tell stories and and, um, and share videos and, and, you know, all, you know, uplifting kind of things and um, share some good ideas and and. It's just, it's a good group. So if you want to join, you know, come on down. Um, and that's about it. So I'll leave you with that. I'm going to go ahead and upload this and uh, get it out there. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'll see you around. So thanks for listening.